If I were to ask you, who is the most successful composer and performer of all time, who would you answer? Too late? The answer is the one and only Sir James Paul McCartney. From having joined his first band with John Lennon, George Harrison, and Stuart Sutcliffe called The Quarrymen in 1957, to still remaining one of the world's top draws to this day at age 74. Paul McCartney is, without a doubt, one of the most talented people to walk this planet. Not only has Paul McCartney released an extensive catalog of songs as a solo artist, he has also taken part in projects promoting subjects such as animal rights, vegetarianism, and poverty. Today, I'm going to show you a sneak peek into Paul McCartney's life by going through his early years, life with the Beatles, and his solo life. First, we'll start out in Liverpool, England on June 18, 1942, when James Paul McCartney was born. McCartney attended Stockton Wood Primary School he transferred to Joseph Williams Jr. School. Then, four years later, McCartney passed the 11 plus exam, along with only three other people out of 90 examinees. This would allow him to attend the Liverpool Institute rather than a secondary modern school. The following year on the bus, he met schoolmate George Harrison. Unfortunately, Paul's mother, Mary McCartney, died of an embolism following a mastectomy in 1956. Paul was only 14, so this was an extremely hard time. However, something great would actually come out of this tragic event. Because his future bandmate, John Lennon, also lost his mother at a very young age, so this would allow them to create a close bond in the years to come. Paul's father, Jim, had always been a keen musician, and he began encouraging Paul and his brother to be musical more and more. Following the death of his mother, Jim gave Paul a trumpet. Had just began getting popular, and so Paul traded his nickel plated trumpet for an acoustic guitar. Although he took formal musical lessons as a young boy, he began to prefer to learn by ear. At the age of 15, in 1957, McCartney met John Lennon and his band, The Quarrymen. Soon after meeting the members, they invited Paul to join him as a rhythm guitarist. With Harrison as lead guitarist and Stuart Sutcliffe on bass, John and Paul quickly became songwriters, and early on they agreed that all of their songs would be credited to Lennon and McCartney, no matter who had taken lead or who wrote the songs entirely on their own. By 1960, the band had gone through several names, including Johnny and the Moondogs, Beatles and the Silver Beatles. Later that year, they then adopted the name The Beatles and recruited drummer Pete Best, which leads us to the next part of McCartney's life, The Beatles. see them in this 200 person capacity club. With all the local fame, they began to get offered to play in Hamburg, Germany. As time went on, they would spend the next three years practicing their touring skills and even occasionally getting in trouble with the law. While in Hamburg, Sutcliffe fell in love with a local artist and photographer, Astrid Kircher. He decided to leave the band and move in with Astrid leaving the position of bass up for McCartney. While recording their first tracks, the Beatles got the attention of Brian Epstein, a music columnist who managed his family's record store. They all connected and soon a partnership was born. Epstein worked himself out trying to get them a deal, refining their looks and their on-stage performances. After getting signed, they had one thing to do, replace the drummer. Thus, Ringo Starr. The band started to become increasingly popular, and so, Beatlemania began. Their debut in America started the musical crossover called The British Invasion. McCartney would write more hits for the band than any other member. Songs like Hey Jude, Let It Be, Hello Goodbye, and Yesterday, which is still the most covered Beatles song of all time. From 1962 to 1970, the Beatles released 12 studio albums and touring constantly until 1966, when they played their final show at Candlestick Park in San Francisco. They could not hear themselves over the fans. With their music becoming more and more complex, it was harder to reproduce the sound that was benefited in a studio. With John Lennon leaving the Beatles first in 1969, McCartney persuaded them to keep it from the press until he himself
himself announced the band's breakup in 1970, which transitioned us to the third section of his life, McCartney's solo career. Paul had no intention of dropping out of the public eye, and he was the first of the Beatles to release a solo album called McCartney in 1970. Paul married Linda Eastman the year before, and they would continue to thrive together until she passes away 30 years later. Quote, I didn't really want to keep going as a solo artist, so it became obvious that I had to get a band together. Linda and I talked it through, and it was like, yeah, but let's not put together a super group. Let's go back to square one, unquote, stated McCartney. And so, Wings was born. Wings' first concert tour began in 1972. McCartney wanted the tour to avoid large venues, keeping it at capacities fewer than 3,000, and they solely played Wings and McCartney's solo material. The band would remain popular throughout the 70s, winning two Grammy Awards and churning out multiple play singles. After having three kids with Linda, they decided to trade in the superstar life for a Scottish rustic farm. Then the 80s came and it was considered a trying time for Paul. He got arrested for marijuana possession in Japan, where he got put in jail for nine days. Later that year, John Lennon was murdered outside of his New York City apartment. McCartney decided to officially take a break from touring, which would last almost a decade. He continued to record new music, however, collaborating with Stevie Wonder and Michael Jackson. By 1989, McCartney was ready for a world tour again. This tour would give Paul the world's record for performing in the largest stadium audience, 184,000 people in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Then came the 90s, when McCartney was asked to compose an orchestral piece, which was called the Liverpool Oratory, and hit number one on the UK classical chart. In 1994, he took four years away from his solo career to work with former bandmates George Harrison and Ringo Starr. They worked on the Beatles Anthology Project, and then released a rock album in 1997, as well as a classical album. The next year, Linda died of cancer after a long illness, but throughout the 2000s, McCartney would actually accomplish a big thing. His 2002 tour, being named the top tour of the year by Billboard magazine, performing with Bruce Springsteen in 2012, headlining the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival in 2013, along with Tom Petty, Billy Idol, and even in 2012 when President Obama awarded him with the Gerwish win, which is the highest award a musician can receive in America. Now that I've taken you throughout the majority of Paul McCartney's life, I think it's easier to tell that he holds the record of being the most successful person and composer in pop music history. You may prefer John Lennon or George Harrison as songwriters, but as far as solo careers, none were as successful as Paul's. Now I've discussed McCartney's early life, life with the Beatles, and his solo life. I hope this is even easier for you to see that Paul McCartney is an amazing, talented man. When asked about retirement plans, McCartney replied, quote, Why would I retire? Sit at home and watch TV? No thanks. I'd rather be out playing, unquote.